this is done by the son, my youngest son who was with Baba for four years. He would have been today so important. I had never seen Baba and Baba was walking with his back towards me, towards the chair. And then I stood there, Baba stopped. He turned around, he looked at me, I looked at him and it was locked, finished. I wrote him a few days ago and I said, you are coping with such dignity, Baba. Give us that sort of blessing that we could cope with that dignity. This is the man I married. This is the man you married? Yes, I was only 15 when I married him. What's his name? Uh, Rajbir Singh. And, and he was Maharaja of Jin, but... Uh, Maharaja? Of Jin. Of Jin. We are the Punjab states. Who is Baba? Well, he is my Romeo and my best friend. The many views, the many opinions, the many shades of spiritual affection for Indian holy man Sri Sancha Sai Baba. Welcome to Soul Journeys and a conversation with Maharani Pritri Beer Kaur of Jin, an exceptional woman with deeply felt experiences and stories of Sai Baba. This interview was recorded where the Maharani lives in Brindavan, Whitefield, in April 2003. Who is Sai Baba? For those people who have never heard his name before, how would you describe him? Who has not heard his name? Almost five and a half billion people have never heard his name. Uh, well, they will soon hear his name, like we did, how we heard it in the early 60s and how we came to Baba when there was really nothing and today I don't think there's a better auditorium or whatever Baba has built is the perfection in beauty, in spiritual, in music and everything. Was it always beautiful here when you first came? Well, here? it had a much better beauty because we had Baba to ourselves and we were very personal and then it used to be a forest area but very hard on the body. We used to bathe in the Chitravati. Uh, a bucket of water would cost us uh, four annas. And there was uh, four annas for a hot uh, bucket of water in Puttaparthi. Mm -hmm. And we had to bathe in, in sort of chita, uh, chat, uh, mats used to be put around so we could have our bath. What was Baba like back then? Baba lived in the Namanda, but he was very simple. He's still very simple. Did he have lots of energy back in those days? As he has now, but that was very visible. There was too much energy. Too, how do you mean too much energy? Oh, he could do anything. He was magic. And still is magic. And how... And very, now it is even better because for a person of my age, that is his age, it's nice to be able to keep up with a little of his powerful energy even now. <laughs> I think that's important for me. I and you've been seeing him many, many times for all these years. Each day as you sit there on the bench as Baba comes in for darshan, do you still feel the same excitement as you did years ago? Would I come if I didn't? I had better things to do. But I love him so much. I don't think any, any person or any body could give the thrill the exact, the ecstasy that you can get from him by one look, and he looks at me every day. I'm his pet dog. His pet dog? Yeah. And does he ever have a chance throughout the years to actually give you a verbal message to help answer your questions? I never have asked Baba questions, Why and not? just recently, there's no need, because I really am not an inquisitive person, I am just what I was when I came and I'll always be the same. And I think that's why he loves me very specially. I'm one of his very special dogs. You never feel compelled to bring him questions about your children, about your family? Well, we've him. had, uh, between Baba and myself, we, I think uh, Baba knows that I have suffered tremendous tragedies. And in fact, just recently, he was talking about the world, Prithvi, and saying how much the world had been abused and hurt by mankind. But he said, this Prithvi who's sitting here, that's me, 
has greater troubles than the world itself. So he knows your troubles? Oh, every bit of them. And are they made lighter because of your relationship with Baba? I don't say anything is lighter, but I'm able to, uh, well, I think I, uh, I might not have come to this age. I would have uh, given up, sort of. But I, I know whatever's happening. He's, one thing is, I do believe in now karma. You can't change it, you can only bear it. And what is karma? My wife tells me it's consequences for our action. How would you define well, karma? Well, it's the same as I would think. It's what you do not in this life, it is many, many lives. And so innocently you come trying to do better this life, but something of the last life catches up with you and you can't get away from it. I'm very lucky I have Baba. I have had great uh, uh, opportunity, opportunities to meet the best masters in India. Been with the Pondicherry mother and all these great masters. And I've always been interested as a child for uh, spiritual life. You were telling me earlier that as a child and as a young woman, you, you, you were somewhat questioning who this person Baba was. After all, you knew. Yes, uh, because um, he came out in the Illustrated Weekly many years ago, it would be in the 60s. And Kushwan Singh had written him up, but not a very complimentary. And I felt that, uh, what's this big hair and all this? <laughs> and it was my son that came to Baba. Uh, he was Baba's very, very close devotee. In fact, uh, Baba asked him, Bharat, will you help? I really feel sad about this because I was there. When Baba got Anantapal land, he chose only Bharat and Justice Aradi, the driver, and myself, and Baba, of course. And we went to Anantapal from Puttaparthi, uh, four o'clock in the morning, long, long, long time ago, when Anantapal was, uh, the land was bought by Baba. And then he announced that very night that from here I will uh, be having my boys in every department in the world. My mission starts from here. And that's the day he bought his land in Anantapur mm -hmm. and he only had three of us with him. So you can imagine how close we were. And uh, we were in a small little car, not a, and Baba sang all the way from Puttaparthi to Anantapur. <laughs> And he sang all the way back from Anantapur to Puttaparthi in one day. And it, of course, those days there was so little traffic, but we did it in quite some time early. I mean, it wasn't so difficult. And it was wonderful. Then he asked Bharat, will you be part of, will you help me in my mission? <laughs> and Bharat didn't say anything because he was a very honest man, something like myself, and he knew that uh, he was not ready to become a very strict person with his uh, with his private life. So he was very f uh, truthful to Baba. He said, no, uh, Baba, I won't be part of that. And what did Baba say to that? Baba didn't say anything to that. Something did happen between the two. He's dead now. And Baba said, the way Bharat dies, very few people die. And he's had the best death on in life because he died in the Himalayas. And without any help of being given water from anybody, he was a Maharaja's son, Maharaj Kumar. He was not a, any Tom, Dick and Harry. But he died like a saint. And he was known in the Himalayas as a saint. And his friends were all like, very, very poor class. Uh, what did you ask me after that? How did, how, did, uh, uh, how did you come to help Baba when he asked if you were going to be able to help him? Uh, help who? Baba with his projects, with his vision back in those years when he was... I was, I told Baba I can never be part of, I'm not a worker, I never worked for Baba. This time also I said, I don't know why you love me, why you care for me so much. I've never done anything for you. But he did say something very beautiful to me. He said, but you're the real love. And you're the what? You're the real love. You're the real love. And he said that to me in December uh, uh, 19, uh, 2002.
if I heard correctly, you told me you and Baba are the same age? I'm five months younger than him. And do you plan to be with him all the way through his 90s, into his mid-90s? I don't think I'll get up to that, but uh, I hope as long as these legs and this body goes, I hope to keep coming. I spend about five months a year with him. I don't stay here permanently. I have a lot of responsibilities in the North because my family didn't grow up as they should and there only three boys died mm. and a husband, I'm a widow. And so I, we have very loyal servants of many generations and I have two big houses. Mm -hmm. I try to, well, as long as the tax man doesn't they pull me down, I'll manage to keep them going. Not for my sake, because I hardly live anywhere. Mm -hmm. I keep, I'm a hobo, living here, living in Puttaparthi, living in Missouri, <laughs> living there. I don't think that makes you a hobo. Well, I am a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> Surely you encounter many people in the North, as I do in America, uh, who just aren't ready to be where you are in your relationship with Baba. Why do you suppose that is? I don't think it's a matter of being readiness. It's, it's a heart to heart, eye to eye, touch to touch, voice to voice relationship. This is not an arrangement. It is there. It just comes. It's, it's an electricity between a, a, a devotee who, who can get it from him. Well, tell me more about that electricity and that energy in the old days of Puttaparthi, in the old days of Vrindavan. Sure. He was more tough in the old days because he had us on our toes. Here at least we can go and sit in an armchair and re relax. <laughs> and how there you, he would you... walk in at once and sit on our beds and play with the children and you never had any privacy. And Baba loved uh, 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 theatre, he loved uh, having drama. his boy drama, he loved training his boys for drama. We had to sit for hours and hours. It was a very hard life. How was he tough? Did he scold people more? Was he stern with people more? Oh yes, he was stern. Because he's very loving today. Uh, that has happened. Uh, uh, he's always been loving. That of course is that. But suddenly something more has happened of late. Say, I would say since the last two years, he's just a ball of love. And I think it is a lot of handicap of the f physical, the, what he calls the magnet, what is troubling him. Drawing so many people, holding him it, down? No, has softened him because the magnet is hard on him. And he understands how hard uh, he, he's our magnet. And you've noticed him slowing down over the oh, most yes, recent oh years? Yes, I do. And do you not, no, not from the last few years. It's only started from the last year badly. Do you worry about him? He knows what he's doing. And he knows how far he'll go. Will people continue to be able to get close to him and have his darshan? One can't say. We see all these other great saints that have slowly slow down. Baba is above that, you know. Baba will be able to do it till the last minute, but uh, the other like Swami Shivananda, great. Have, do you know anything about the saints in India? We have had great saints. Well, I think I was brought to Baba from Yogananda. And I think Swami Yogananda never came to see Baba. No, but he started uh, lots of people on the uh, Eastern spiritual path. and I know, I've read his book, and he, Baba's, many devotees of Baba's, Later on, uh, were at one time some Mrs. Taylor. All this, uh, they, they, they were all Yogananda's devotees. And you might be curious to know that the world's most, the world's newest saint to be led me to Baba, Mother Teresa. Oh, Mother Teresa has been to my house. Also, uh, I have a big. Uh, uh, I we are also a bit Christian in my upbringing. Because we had, uh, my, my grandmother was a Romanian Maharani and uh, she was Roman Catholic. She had to be converted to become a queen. The government of, uh, in England was then, yes. the government that they had, uh, that if she had to marry a Maharaja, she had to be converted. And from her side, we have a lot of Roman Catholic relations and I still am, uh, I still have great feeling for Jesus, Jesus and Mother Mary and Mother Teresa. If I have another chance to talk with Baba this week, I'm going to ask him, is Jesus going to come again as Jesus or as Baba? 
being raised Christian, what do you think about that? No, I don't think. Times are different. The needs were different. And uh, Jesus was slower. This one's too fast. He has a much harder time, Baba has. He's come in the atomic time. Is he going to have an influence on the current geopolitical system with the wars, with the conflict, with the... I so don't think of these things. That is for Baba to decide what he wants to do. But I'm sure, uh, you know this word, nature has to take its place and Baba will not interfere with nature. He doesn't interfere with one suffering. He doesn't really help. You have to help yourself. But people have asked Baba if they could take his name to the West, to America, and he says, no, don't take my name, take my love, take my works. Why wouldn't we, why shouldn't we take his name to where people don't know of him? I think he, he's like that. He never wants to push himself onto anybody. If you love him, you love him uh, totally. Uh, otherwise, it's, uh, he won't push himself. He and never pushes himself. And has, have you held Baba in such high regard endlessly or do you go through periods of self-doubt, concern for who or what anything is, including you Baba? You see, I don't work on this thing of spiritual life. I live uh, as Prithvi and I have a relationship with Sai Baba which is so fantastic. I couldn't ask for more. And I've had a wonderful relationship with other great, great people, great men, especially men. And under my ma also, but I have met all the people and I have been to Sri Krishna Prem in the mountains, the great uh, pilot uh, master, yes. Ashish Maj, and uh, I've lived in their ashram. But uh, you see, finding Baba was the real thing, wasn't it? And he, for me, is the greatest of all. Because he, nobody would control a crowd the way he does, in silence. Mm -hmm. Total He never watches and then you want to watch him. Is that some of the greatest pleasure you get, just watching his movements? Oh, that's it. I don't want to know anything about my future or I don't want to know how I can become a better person. I think I'm a good person. See, my cats love me. <laughs> Nobody's ever done that before. I, Baba's always allowed me to bring dogs also. I've always had my little dogs. I used to be bringing him puppies for his devotees. He used to give them as presents. I'm going to predict that many people will see you on video and they'll say to themselves, how can I be like her? How would you tell them they can draw themselves closer to God as you have? I'm not bitter for my very tragic past. I have been through partition, which had been a great tragedy. We are from Pakistan and educated there. That was not Pakistan, that was India. India. And I used to play the best games in my school. I was champion of cho hockey in Lahore, swimming. Ravi Shankar, Uday Shankar used to come as little young men from Almora to see the Indian girl swim, sort of thing. <laughs> and I've had a wonderful life, but a lot of tragedy. And what did you really ask me for that question? How somebody watching your story... Oh, they'd have to go through the, the, the mincing, mincing machine first. And the tragedies of life, as sad as they are, as gut and heart tearing as they are, is there good that can come from tragedy like that? The personal losses. You see, the taking away, uh, uh, well, let's talk about the great tragedy is independence, one, then partition, which came so suddenly on uh, in August that year. And then the rule, princes being just deposed in uh, with, uh, with promises which were broken very soon by this government. These are very great tragedies and a lot of culture and beauty went with this. And I had I happen to be uh, a Jean's um, granddaughter, also married in the Jean family. So I was, they trusted me a lot and I was a very good administrator for my state. But it was very sad to see the changes and Baba has felt it for us also. He felt that it was better with the princes than it is now. Hmm. Because the princes 
were some they had their drinking habits they had some bad habits but they didn't have this habit of hoarding money and robbing people i shouldn't talk like that but it's like that you mentioned earlier that you're here about five months a year now in yes, Vrindavan. Yes, uh, 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 Puttaparthi. Yeah. Uh, what What do you do when you're here? Describe it to yes, people. Yes, nothing, and I think doing nothing is is being everything. <laughs> Where did you hear that before? That's the right in a thing. That's wonderful. Because I was a rider. I used to race camels in my uh, states, Dadri. It has the fastest crossing ground in the world, natural crossing, uh, uh, crossing ground. Had my greyhounds, uh, we had our cheetahs, we had all sorts of things. I've been through all sorts of life and here I sit just well, with a nylon sari. <laughs> but I always wear my pearls. <laughs> it's a little hard to believe that you do nothing. I'm sure you do something. Can no, you? thank God I've got the cats now. I do them. No, I do nothing. I just attend. I'm always on time. I never go late for darshan. All these years I've been like that. I eat very little. And, uh, so I, you're like Baba. He eats very little. I think he's, he's always on I time. Think, I, think, uh, I think he's... I do believe he's training me up like that. Huh? I eat very little. I'm surprised at myself. When, when we tell the story of Sai Baba to people, that he comes out and does darshan in Puttaparthi twice a day, here once in Bhajans every day, Monday through Sunday, no holidays, no weekends off, no vacations, they don't understand, they can't believe it. Where, where does he draw the desire and energy and commitment from to do this relentlessly every day of the year. And that is him, the purest of pure. He And he is your friend, he'll never let you down, he'll never let us down. Of course the physical will be hard for him, but he, I wrote him a few days ago and I said, you are coping with such dif dignity, Baba, give us that sort of blessing that we could cope with that dignity. He models the dignity very well uh, to all of us. Manages his, uh, his uh, handicap, for whether it is for a while this handicap, whether it is for long, one doesn't know, that only Baba knows, but uh, it's not easy for Baba because he was, he's such a beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful person to have this handicap must be. But he's got a beautiful face now. Before he used to come with angry face sometimes. Angry face? And eyes that used to burn. And you were frightened of him. But now it's only like little butter. <laughs> I'm, hungry, I'm hungry to hear more stories about how Baba first impressed you back in the early 60s. Can you tell us more about those days with Baba well, I, When I met him first, uh, it was, uh, I came with Indra, I didn't come with Indra Devi, you know Indra yes. Devi. We came, she came in one taxi and I came in another. My mother had been in, my stepmother had been in the Tata Memorial Hospital with the galloping cancer. She was dying. And one of her relations came along in a helicopter, he was a crop sprayer in the south of India, he was a north, from North India. And he said to my mother, why don't you go and see that big hairy saint? She said, who? So then we came to know about Sai Baba and also about Shirdi Sai Baba. And in, in, in uh, the Tata Memorial Hospital, a lot of things happen. For the great devotees of Shirdi Sai Baba. So that's how we came to Baba for her cancer. But my son had been before. He came before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Did you tell us how your son was attracted to Sai Baba? Uh, from uh, he had great devotion to me. I was I read about Baba in the um, Illustrated Weekly, and I said to him, "As you are going to South India, we, South India for us is like going to Europe. You better try to go and see him and ask him, ask him for help." He was very obedient, but he was a very spiritual boy. And it was uh, not easy for him to find Puttaparthi in those days. Because there were no roads. There were no roads and then Andhra, what is Andhra, we knew nothing about Andhra, we know nothing about Bangalore, all this sort of thing and that sort of thing. It was very difficult. And he went and he stayed two months with Baba. After the, making all that effort yes, and spending stayed, too and much. And then he brought a picture 
uh, sign by Baba for me. And he said, Mummy, you ma to Delhi. And he said, you must go. I said, and give up my golf. Are you mad? Give up your golf? I'm a, I was captain of my golf club. <laughs> it was a very good golf No club. golf courses in Puta Party back then? <laughs> well, there's a little pot putting or something in the college, I think. I see them with clubs sometimes, <laughs> hitting a few balls. I said, I'm not doing anything. But after my husband's death, you know, we were big hunters and, and we had a, I'll show you a picture of my husband. I have okay. it here. And uh, we had a very strict life of darbars and things like that. And we were, we were very good in uh, the shikar line. Um, after his death, I was very broken when he died. He, I was very young, only 32, and I had uh, five sons and one daughter. And I had the three, three sons were of another Maharani, but I had to look after them because she had died. And then I uh, uh, took up golf to change uh, my, my hobbies. I had to give up. I couldn't afford the elephants, couldn't afford anything. Then the states were taken over. It was a very, very hard time. Baba says that nobody has really suffered as I have. And was it a hardship to give up golf? I had to choose because I was doing well in golf, but there were other things also. I was uh, running a factory and I found it a great strain. Things were changing. Traffic was increasing. Things were changing. And when I'd come into high competition, I had to leave at that time for Shivratri or I'd have to leave for Guru Purnama and my uh, people who played golf just felt that I was uh, very unsteady with my commitments. So then I decided, all right, let's play just ordinary golf, nothing that is... But even that didn't work because the traffic became so I, said, I gave it up completely then. Mm -hmm. I had to, because I just um, now as you say, what you do here, I do nothing. What you do in uh, North India, I do again now nothing, but sit there and be uh, comfortable with my pie dog or something like this. Now, let's go back to the first time you finally decided to grant your son's wishes to come see ba Sai Baba and you somehow made the very difficult trip down yeah, from the they, North. They came by plane. And to Bangalore or to where? To Bangalore and then took a friend's car, but we couldn't, I don't think we could get to the ashram. No, not then. It was all uh, f uh, uh, the marshy land. But we got to Puttaparthi, and at that time it was just 11 o'clock. Uh, Indra Devi was in a taxi, and we were in a friend's car. And we, bo we both got together uh, to Puttaparthi. It was fantastic, it was afternoon. Uh, no, it was before bhajan time. Uh, ba that time bhajan used to be at 11 o'clock. And uh, we were given, uh, shown a little room. We stayed there for a little while, then uh, we went straight in. I went straight to, to the bhajan hall and stood very arrogantly in the door of the bhajan hall with my bag and my white sari, my pearls and looking very handsome. <laughs> and in spite of the journey, but it must have been Baba that had brought this handsomeness out because I was shining. And I stood at the, it was the first door of the entrance of the big mandar, and it was only half full. And I had never seen Baba, and Baba was walking with his back towards me, towards the chair. And then I stood there, Baba stopped. He turned around, he looked at me, I looked at him, and it was locked, finished. That was our love. And that's how I slowly, slowly made it longer and longer. And I loved his Sai Gita. And I loved it. We used to have such a nice fun with Sai Gita, Baba laughing away. It was such fun in those days. Did it make any difference to you or not that he was able to do wonderful things with his hand, from babuti to watches to trinkets to This necklaces? doesn't impress me at all. Why did he, he do it? I think he just likes to likes to watch other people's opinion. I think <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter to him. He sees a shield. <laughs> I don't need anything. Bhuti is important. Mm -hmm. Bhuti is important, but he likes to do it. And he, he accepts whatever he likes. I saw him in darshan this morning make bhuti 
Within 30 seconds, oh, you made it twice. Oh, you just now. I was inside this morning, yes. I saw you in your life, though. Yeah, he, he took my letter today. Yeah. And right before he came to me, he made the booty for a woman. And 30 seconds later, he made the booty for a man. Oh. I've never seen him make it back to back oh, so yeah, quickly so before. Yeah, so yes, nothing. For him, it's nothing. How about the rest of your family and your friends from up north? Are they? Are some of those people still skeptical? Do they say things about you? They think you? I'm stupid that I give up so much of, uh, um, you know, I used to love dancing, I love music, I have theater, I used to love going to pictures, I was in every embassy party and all that thing. I was a gay, gay person, very gay, full of fun playing golf and I was uh, captain of the Delhi Golf Club. Uh, uh, club. That's a very great honor. Mm -hmm. And never having any golfers in our family, that is not our, g our game. Mm -hmm. Ours was really shikar. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now I have no friends there. Oh, well, it's too bad. I talk to them on the telephone, but my friends are uh, people like Betty mm -hmm. and someone that has got Baba in them, you know. Baba seems to change us that way. But you, 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 uh, uh, even my relations who they do believe in Baba, but they think I'm stupid to give up my life like this I, as I have for Baba. I haven't given up anything. Baba Baba's tolerated a lot of my nonsense. Uh, but the thing is that they say, why do you go there so uncomfortable? You have no servant. You don't eat proper food. Who cooks for you? Who what? I do it myself. I get everybody <laughs> gives me food. It's like these jungly cats. I give them food. I get food from everybody. So it's not that, but I like being with Baba. Mm -hmm. It's good for me. Mm -hmm. I so, don't. So why aren't you here all year then? I that I think uh, would be running away from my duty. Mm. I have duty uh, first, he says. Yes, I have uh, my uh, my children. Never, my family are now fifty, sixty, the two that are alive, and they don't earn money. They just uh, so they need you. They I need to give them money, and I have to see that things are properly run. Mm -hmm. Whatever little we have, whatever little Baba has left, uh, we have to see that it is to be run properly and. My wife, my wife lost her mother and her father. I lost my mother and my father and my sister recently. You've lost your children and your husband and your parents. Does Baba give you any insight on how to feel more comfortable with them now that they're deceased? I don't think about them. You don't think about no. them? No. I don't even think. It was two years ago, I think, in here. Baba even cut me off from the ones that are alive. He said, he like Krishna, he stood up in the room and he said, now you and I have done our best. Don't turn back. Never turn back. Just go forward. One step at a time. I'm with you. I've never, I haven't seen my family, but I provide for them. It's very hard, you know, because we, I lo I've lost so much. I'll show you a picture of my mm -hmm. husband. We were very, 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 we are very big Maharajas. We are not small uh, petty kings. We are very big. Do you ever feel Second like... Second biggest state in the Punjab. Is it? Patiala, Pulkin states. I mean, this is history I'm talking mm -hmm. about. I this is to, not only... And well, very I would spiritual. love to see all this area. But it's all gone with my eldest son, who was my stepson. He he just uh, married into an Indian uh, Anglo-Indian family. Well, I'm also Romanian, so I can't, don't know whether I'm really Indian or what. But she destroyed the whole thing. It's the I've never been so bad in any family as in our family. And I built, I built it up. That's what Baba said. Prithvi builds. Mm. How does how does we're, we're still human after all? Even if you have Baba close to you as much as you do, how do we deal with our sadness when occasionally the thoughts come to us about our? Life? I have from childhood. I have suffered very severe depressions. Um, even as a little girl, that sadness comes. It must be something from the past. It comes in the afternoon. Does it still come? Well, I had, uh, I've told Baba many times and he, sh he said, no, it's not that you, you are all right. And, but it does come sometimes. It's so, but, but what is so lovely here, what is important here is that I have to get up and put on my sari 
and go for darshan. Then it uh, that time it goes. changes. It all but when up. I'm in my mountain home, I live in the mm -hmm. mountains also for four months of the year. The Baba has lived in that house also. Mm -hmm. I um, I feel very sad because what can I do at that time? I have to go through that sadness, and I try very hard for Baba's sake not to. But I have some. Some tragedy of some janama has hit mm -hmm. me, and I can't, I can't get over it. Does Baba ever come to you in your dreams? Very seldom now. But when he, when, uh, when he wanted me to become a devotee, he was always oh, giving me such uh, dreams about himself. And when you're in your mountain home, when you're in the north, and you remain home with your children, your two. Sweet. No, I have nobody with me now. Okay. I have a Scotsman with me from Krishna Prem's uh, ashram, mm -hmm. a devotee of that. Um, uh, that uh, ashram. He has been with me 34 years. He loves Baba, but he's, it is because of him that I can come to Baba and stay five months because he looks after my affairs there. Mm -hmm. What I was going to ask was, when you find yourself there and you're away from Baba and you've been away from Baba for four or five months, do you find yourself being led by intuition, or do you find, or do you believe that Baba guides you with your I thoughts? I think uh, I think Baba has set my pattern. That uh, like this, I should come. What used to happen in the beginning when I used to say uh, go to say goodbye to Baba, then he would say, "I'll see you on such and such a time," and I had to come. Then slowly, slowly, he he would say, "When will I see you?" Then I was given the liberty to make a decision. Now nothing is said. He knows that I will come. I will always come and spend some time with him here and some time, and not short time, long time. And for that I have to keep very good relationship with my people in the north that they look after things while I'm here. We're hearing some music go by. I'm a Westerner. I'm not used to budgeons. I've learned to like them. I've grown to love them. What's the magic of budgeons? When I sit in the Darshan Hall and watch Baba, he's not saying a word, and I'm listening to music that's not something that's part of my culture, it's very foreign not to me. Your rhythm. But it's but it has a mystique that's very discernible even to a Westerner. What's the power that goes on with Baba's bhajans? Baba's bhajans are very unique and Baba when he puts his hands up, I mean he's the king mm -hmm. of kings. And what does he he, do? he sits he doesn't have to wear a crown, his crown is in his hand, <laughs> he's holding the orb. And the other, I don't know what else is held, is a sword. He's there like that. I mean, you see him, he's uh -huh. the king of kings. And what's this gesture mean? I, I, I bet I can't. I'm just going to do this so the camera sees it. But I can't say what that means. And what's this gesture mean? Oh, God alone knows what Baba's done. <laughs> I think he's not there sometimes anyway. <laughs> he just flies off and makes <laughs> us sit. <laughs> and, and, and it, when you catch his gaze boring a hole right through your eyes, what is that all about? Oh, that's love. Not scolding, not advising, just accepting you as you are. You may be anything in this world, but he accepts you as you are. Baba says we have about as much free will as a donkey tied to a hitching post. Oh, I, I, he's given me so much of freedom and when I come back, I always think oh, maybe I took too much advantage, but I know he never holds it against me. I, he knows that I'm learning how to walk. <laughs> We're all infants, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I think you've had enough. <laughs> One last question. Yes. For those people who are still scratching their heads trying to figure out the answer, who is Baba? Well, he's my Romeo and my best friend. Thank you. I was Baba's first uh, woman speaker in Madras in the early seventies. Uh, no, he, but did he 1960 uh, would be 68, 69. Did he personally choose you to be the first woman speaker? No, he didn't. He must have said, ask her to speak. Uh, whether she knows, I do not know. And I spoke. And I made everybody cry. Uh. And it was in Madras, the first uh, conference of Sai Baba. In Madras? In Madras. And uh, uh, Mr. Rayinga was in charge. And uh, Governor Rao uh, was presiding. And I have a question. 
When you spoke to crowds of people about Baba, did you prepare meticulously your no, speech or did no, you speak no, from, from the heart? From the heart. From the heart. From the heart and the eyes. <laughs> and the eyes. I was a pretty girl then. <laughs> <laughs> You're a beautiful and he, woman now. And he gave me the lingam 16 days after from his stomach. He gave you the he lingam? The lingam. Oh, yes, and that's another big story. So this is your last life. God <laughs> Mr. Hislop has said that. Mr. Hislop wrote about the lingam, you see. I know. I was in that lingam book of his. Then oh, that was about your lingam? The, the, uh, my lingam. But then what he said is that she was a divorcee. I was never... I oh, was that's a, right. Yeah. That it, he yeah. should not have said that. Is that the lingam that bounced down the stairs? Yes, that's the one. I spoke about it in... I gave a little uh, the speech on this in Kodakana. And everyone wrote to me that this is the nicest discourse that we had. And for the un uninitiated, in a nutshell, what does the lingam signify? It's just something, a part of Baba, that is it. When, what, we are six, we are from the north, we have no uh, stone images or anything like that. But you worship it, you yeah. drink the water and it's kept me going. <laughs> it's yeah. kept you going. It's kept you beautiful. <laughs> With my back teeth. <laughs> no, no, no. You're beautiful. Thank you again. Oh, Sairam, Sairam. It's Sairam. been lovely meeting you. Lovely meeting you too.